Okay, so uh, welcome to the Jashu's World. This is a particular um, channel that is dedicated to the Wi-Fi sample link uh, microcontroller series, especially the one that comes from Texas Instruments. And uh, presently in front of you, I have just placed uh, one such uh, microcontroller board, which they call uh, it as Launchpad. Uh, most probably many of you must be having this launch pad who want to work on this kind of uh, simple link microcontroller series. The, the simple link microcontroller series, they start with uh, a various number of MCUs like for example, um, they have some Ethernet enabled MCUs, some are Wi-Fi enabled MCUs, some are sub 1 gigahertz. So this course is specifically designed for those who would like to expertise themselves for developing uh, products or maybe for some proof of concept purpose or maybe for some educational purpose on such kind of launch pads. So let me just uh, give you a very basic introduction of uh, uh, what a launch pad board which is lying in front of you is. So, Basically, what whenever we uh, plan to make any kind of design in a MCU or a microcontroller system, uh, we first uh, select a kind of a PCB or rather a board, uh, a development board, in which we can test our programs. And if the programs successfully run, and if it is completely debugged, and if we can incorporate all the kind of requirements that has been given from either the customer side or maybe uh, the design point of view then we can make our own PCBs and bring up our own boards and thereby interface the entire system according to our requirements so <coughs> the development board that is provided from Texas Instruments uh, is called family of launch pads and uh, these are the sweet little uh, red colored boards uh, that have primarily two parts uh, I will show you <coughs> over here only first is this part okay so you basically have a USB port over here if I just uh, if I'm just if I can just plug, plug it off and show it to you like this so uh, here we have here you can see that there is a there is a USB port over here. So this this particular USB port this this is a this is a micro USB port. Uh, this USB port will help you to connect this to your own programming system, the programming computer. And there is one small uh, switch over here. This is a push button, a micro push button, for resetting the entire system. So this part of the board is basically what we know as the debugger along with emulator they call it XDS 110 and uh, these are the jumpers right so these are the jumpers which are used to connect the system uh, that is the debugger system to your target microcontroller I will go to the, the, the this section later on so uh, this is the you can say the JTAG part of your book now, one beautiful thing about the JTAG given by MS, by, T, by TI is that if you take out these jumpers or you also have some dedicated ports, so if you take out these jumpers or use these ports, you can also use this debugger for programming your own target board. That is, suppose if you have a production system and if you want to program your production microcontroller, you can also debug that particular production target using this particular JTAG. Even if you don't have any kind of dedicated uh, JTAG programmers from TI, you can also use this. So this is one beautiful part of it. So now let me go to the second part of the board that is the Wi-Fi part of the board. Now, as I said, this is a CC3220SF uh, microcontroller um, launch pad. So this is basically an ARM Cortex M4F microcontroller that has two processors I will go into the depth of the architecture so it has two processors inbuilt inside it one is the network processor that is NWP which they also call it as the network uh, processing unit so that but that particular microcontroller that is also an ARM Cortex microcontroller so the work of that MCU is to control the entire network capabilities of the board because you have some extraordinary features 
uh, built inside this particular SOC like you have and you can host your own internet server you can have uh, TLS secured socket connections you can have um, normal HTTP REST API communication uh, socket connections you can also uh, you can also like um, have a whole lot of you know like uh, web features that is internet TCP IP and UDP uh, socket uh, connection features so all these things are hosted inside along with encryption so all these things are host hosted inside this target MCU so this is the target microcontroller this has one um, NWP or network processor as I said which takes care entirely of the network side and there is another ARM Cortex M4 separate application processor which is hosted inside and that can be used by the user to uh, basically uh, you know develop your own application program for example uh, there are a lot of peripherals and you can use one of those peripherals or multiple of those peripherals to communicate with some sensors or third party wireless communication systems and whatnot I mean the application area can be huge so uh, basically uh, this particular this is a QFN package that is quad flat package QFP uh, so uh, in this particular microcontroller board that's a launch pad you will have all the port connections these are the port connections okay so uh, if if we go through the data sheet or when we will be going through the data sheet we will see that there are GPIOs there is an ADC uh, I think there's a 12-bit ADC with four user dedicated channels and four internal channels. Uh, there is also I2C peripheral. There are two UARTs, uh, U U UARTs for communication with, uh, with uh, UART systems. There is SPI, and also one more important feature that uh, we have here is that uh, if you see uh, the website, you will see that this particular microcontroller it has three versions one is cc3220 the normal one that comes with an internal memory where you can keep your application program the one is the s part that is a secured you can have a secured internal transaction of the data for the for this for the socket layers and the other is a 3220sf now this SF part, which is the one that we have over here, uh, the beauty of the SF part is that you can you have an one MB of XIP flash, and that XIP flash can host your application, um, uh, say a web server or other kind of applications which you want to run inside your your host MCU. And this is that particular XIP flash that we have over here as the SOIC package. I'm sure you must be able to see it. Uh, this one, it's this one. So this particular XIP flash chip, this is also connected on board, and you can you can like uh, use it for your own um, you know, programming. Uh, like for example, when we will be running um, a web server inside this inside this particular microcontroller, the, all the HTML files and all the all the required JavaScript files will be stored inside. So uh, that is one beautiful thing about this microcontroller SF version. Well, if you don't need that SF version, if you if you do not need such huge amount of internal memory, then you can always go for a lower version that is S part or even the normal 3220. Uh, another important feature is that there is a G there there are uh, there are some LEDs. There are there are three user LEDs over here. Uh, these these three user LEDs are connected with GPIOs. So we will see that uh, there are multiple GPIOs in this particular microcontroller package. Now, since this is the RF MCU, so some pins are dedicated exclusively for the RF connections. That is the that is, for example, the the radio part and uh, and the associated component. And uh, there are some pins, or the re or the remaining number of pins are there which can be used either as a GPIO or it can be multiplexed uh, as some analog ADC input channel or some peripheral. So all those things we will see when we will configure all the registers. So these are three user uh, GPIO LEDs which you can use for testing your programs. This is a Wi-Fi external can uh, antenna connector in case if you feel that uh, the onboard, we already have an onboard uh, antenna over here as you can see. 
but uh, if you want you can also uh, connect your own external antenna over here and uh, you can expand the you can say the range of this particular system of this particular uh, launch pad now uh, the launch pad also comes with some sensors like for example we have a we have a temperature sensor over here that comes on the i squared c channel it is very small mm. it is really very small i do not know if i can show you properly in this video so this particular uh, chip as here which, which you can see is actually the temperature sensor and there is also a three axis accelerometer which is given on board so from these two uh, from these two um, i squared c slaves you can just you know pick up some values and you can also uh, like test your own system so this is all about uh, the cc3220 launch pad uh, there are a lot of code lot of pins there is a sop uh, that is a sense of power uh, pin over here the sop pins uh, main functionality is let me just show you the sop uh, this is the sop this one this one this is the sop Okay, there are three three uh, options for the SOP. So this SOP basically is a sense of power. I will be explaining the detail of the sense of power utility. And uh, there are two user push buttons on the side. One is over here, and the other is on the other side of the board that is over here. So there are two user push buttons over here. The, I do not know if you can see both of them very clearly in the video. Uh, one is this one. And the other is this one and one more important thing that I need to tell over here is there are two crystals over here that is one is this one so there are two crystals because one controls the network processing the network um, carrier frequency of 2.4 uh, gigahertz uh, which it generates and uh, the other is uh, the application part that is that is 32.768 which generates the clock signals for running the microcontroller internal circuitry so that's the, all about the first part on the or the front part of the board and uh, if you can see over here the the debugger of the JTAG is also built on a Tiva processor so uh, for all those guys who are familiar with uh, with with TI family uh, there's a family of microcontroller called Tiva that is TIVA it's a TM4C series. So this is a basically a TIVA Ethernet enabled microcontroller. So they have used a TIVA TM4C1294 as the debugger part. Uh, so for the for the bottom part, there's nothing much to see. Uh, just that you can also stack another launch pad or some some booster pack on the button on the on the bottom. So you can you can just use these uh, female uh, bug, uh, connectors to to connect it with any kind of uh, slave that you want to use or maybe you want to stack it up with another launch pad another interesting thing which you would find on the opposite side are the are the name, naming conventions of the sop pins so what what happens for the for the sense of power det detections are given so like there are four possibilities one is from uh, for the flash uh, the other is for the four wire jtag and the third is for the two-wire uh, SWD that is also a two-wire JTAG and the third one is uh, out the sorry the last one is flash so all these things we will see when we go more deep now let me tell you one more important feature of this particular launch pad is that you know uh, as you can see over here there are some something which is mentioned that is called uh, NC, NC, NC. I do not know if you can if you can see uh, properly in the video uh, it is it is shown as NC, NC, NC. NC means that these part of the connector pins are not connected. Let me let me uh, tell you, these part of the connector pins are not connected. It's only this part is written as NC. Here there is no NC. So wherever you see NC, also over here you can see one more NC is there. Okay. So wherever it is written NC, it means that uh, those pins on the launch pad are not connected. So. Um, Let's just plug it in, and there is one more uh, feature that uh, that is like uh, more very uh, useful for any kind of development for any wireless uh, microcontroller SOC is that we can use a whole lot of simple link libraries. So the simple link libraries are something that uh, I will explain while I'll be going 
through the details. So basically, Simple Link helps you to port your application from one microcontroller family to another. So for example, if you if you feel that tomorrow uh, you need to use the same code uh, code base or the application with another another family of of, uh, of TI Launchpad, uh, so you can just port it with some basic changes and you can use it. So I think that's a pretty much good introduction uh, for connecting and uh, a launchpad. So just use this uh, micro USB cable that comes from Texas Instruments. It comes with the box itself. So um, you just uh, connect this side to your launchpad. This side will be connected to your launchpad, and the this one, the bigger side, will be connected to your PC USB port. So just take care uh, when you are plugging it in. Um, just don't give too much of force because this is after all a SMD connection so don't don't give too much of force just you know, simply just plug it in it should be tight enough and, uh, this part will go into the PC so that's all about uh, the basic video I wanted to show you uh, regarding the launch pad so just hang it on for the next session Till then, goodbye. If you like this channel, do subscribe. Do subscribe. Thank you.